This is the Gadsden flag, or as many people like to call it, the don't tread on me flag. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin really liked the flag. He said that the rattlesnake was, because it was indigenous to this part of the world, would be a good symbol. And also because the rattlesnake doesn't blink, he figured that would be a symbolic of being ever vigilant. And if you'll notice on this, there's also 13 sections to the rattle, which of course, one for each colony, 13 colonies. Now he felt that the snake would warn people who walked upon it by rattling. And that's what he looked at this as, you know, don't step on a snake, don't step, don't tread on me. This is a liberty statement. <laughs> now this was gonna be my original sort of uh, project, I was talking about this, but as I went further into the research, I found out that a better story to tell is the creator. I was being the Gadsden flag. The creator was Christopher Gadsden. Christopher Gadsden was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1724. He was a religious man. He was an Anglican. He was a businessman. He was a patriot. He was a military man having risen to Brigadier General. He was also a politician and most notably he was a rabble rouser. <laughs> now, in doing my research, everything I read about him, what historians say, it comes in, they characterize him one of two ways. The first one is he is the Samuel Adams of the South. The second one is he is a forgotten founding father. So I thought, well, these are what made the basis of my paper. So when you read about it, I, I look at, I, I I formed two questions. Number one is, how is he like Samuel Adams? The second one is, is um, how was he, how is, why was he a forgotten father, founding father? Why was he a forgotten founding father? Now, as far as the Samuel Adams part, that's pretty easy. You could just kind of compare them, mesh them up and see where they fall. And you can see that there were several similarities, but the two that really stood out for me, one of them was that, um, Samuel Adams, of course, was a provocateur, and so was Chris, Christopher Gatson. So both provocateurs who didn't mind getting a mob and a, a provoking a mob into a frenzy. <laughs> the other one is that um, they were both leaders of the Sons of Liberty. So there's other similarities, and I kind of expand on that a little bit in the paper and talk about some other things. The other thing, the other part of that equation was how, why was he a forgotten father and I I think that this would take you down a whole bunch of rabbit holes if you really start to and, and there is some conjecture I mean you know that it's kind of hard to say but I do know that from the reading Chris Gatson was probably not real easy to get along with if you were a um, if you were a power to be kind of guy the, the local politicians the establishment if you will because he was pretty quick pretty quick with the tongue. <laughs> he would write articles in the paper and eviscerating some of the policies. I, my guess is that since he also went to jail, when the British had Charleston, they jailed him, and he spent a whole bunch of time in uh, solitary confinement because he would not pledge loyalty to the crown. Eventually he was let out and went back to Charleston because he was in prison in, in Georgia, but he went back to Charleston and at some point, they elected him as governor. And he turned him down because while he was in solitary confinement, he developed all kinds of problems. His vision wasn't right. He was dizzy, you know, getting dizzy spells and just a whole bunch of stuff. So he turned it down. He thought he didn't think he could. He was uh, capable of performing the duties as a governor. So what we do have from him, though today, there's two things as part of his legacy. Number one, he was one of the signers of the U.S. Constitution. He was on, he was a congressman who, in South Carolina, who ratified the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And the second one, 